everyone to my Pranita Shivastav and today I have come with another lecture on fermentation systems. So in last few classes we were talking about like fermentation media just like we started with the industrial microorganisms and uh, actually talking to the industrial microbiology. So industrial microorganisms then we talked about the fermentation media and now today we are going to talk about the fermentation systems. So basically, uh, before uh, going into the depth of this lecture about the fermentation systems, uh, we should, uh, uh, in, in brief, I would uh, like to tell something, uh, some history of this, uh, basically about this uh, fermentation systems. So initially when we start, uh, I would uh, like to uh, tell about uh, a scientist who was very famous about the Lewis Pasteur. Actually, he was the one who introduced the fermentations. Uh, initially, when we talk about the microbiology, uh, we know that the father of microbiology is Anthony von Leeuwenhoek and, uh, and the microbiology came into existence in around the 1700, uh, 1700s. But after 200 years, Louis Pasteur, he actually scientifically, basically, uh, basically uh, the start of the industrial or the scientific microbiology was uh, basically uh, promoted by Louis Pasteur. And, uh, he uh, he introduced about the fermentation reactions like alcohol uh, in the presence of the microorganisms like yeast. So from from there this fermentation start and uh, this uh, industrial microbiology uh, basically uh, was uh, came into limelight from uh, that time and that it. That from that uh, point of time, uh, there were certain advancements and uh, so many processes or systems were developed and uh, uh, basically uh, this, uh, the total, the base of the industrial microbiology depends upon the fermentation systems. So today we are going to talk about the fermentation uh, systems. Now we should understand actually uh, about the industrial fermentations. As we are talking about here, this is totally uh, industrial uh, microbiology uh, course. So I would like to talk about the, uh, at the at the basis of the on the level of the industry. So when we talk about the industrial fermentation, so basically fermentation in industries, uh, the fermentation it is used to uh, to, to produce the uh, bio pharmaceuticals, biofuels, and uh, then uh, food and uh, feed supplements and we have certain chemical building blocks uh, the uh, production of the amino acids about the certain kind of protein enzymes so uh, these kind of products are being found in industrial uh, microbiology or under the industrial fermentation we would rather say now here the basically the involvement of the microorganisms are uh, important or the, uh, a very is very crucial basically so uh, here we will talk about the fermentative microorganisms which are being used at this level of fermentation. So these uh, uh, fermentative microorganisms, they basically they consume the carbon sources and especially we will talk about the sugars and then they uh, produce uh, alcohols, uh, various kinds of acids and gases. So fermentation uh, basically is, uh, they, they produce these three properties three products are very important when we use the word fermentation at the industrial level. Now, we are talking about the industrial fermentation. So there are certain factors when we talk about any industrial product. So the main important factor that is the cost effectiveness of the process. So here, how do we uh, uh, decide the cost effectiveness of the process? So the main, the components or uh, the factors that are involved in this process that ha has to be taken into consideration and then only basically the cost effectiveness of the process will be decided. So here the factors which are responsible, it is the cost of the media. It is the cost of the media and supplements. As previously uh, in the last lecture, I talked about the fermentation media. So uh, initially, uh, when we take any substrate, 
so it is very important to know whether uh, whether the substrate is uh, expensive or it is economic economical so normally uh, at the industrial level substrates uh, like agricultural waste agricultural uh, uh, by products uh, they are used in the industries because they because they these are uh, easily available and they are uh, economical or cheaper too so that way uh, the cost of the media and supplements are uh, decided the kind of supplements which are being used in the media so they also play an important role role in adding to the cost of the process uh, then the second thing is the culture growth and viability so it also depends because usually uh, the fermentation run is very important so it should be whether the it, it, it actually it is always preferred to have a short run so culture growth so cultures microorganisms are uh, just uh, they are looked for their uh, uh, basically uh, their fermentation time as shorter will be the their uh, fermentation or the growth time uh, the shorter will be the process uh, that will be carried out and second thing the viability how the potential of their viability how much viable they are means how long they can be viable during the process then the process run time so basically the process run time is also very important the process run time in the process run time uh, so many things like if we talk from the very basic initial uh, requirement that is the electricity like some uh, some uh, uh, overhead uh, things that we uh, just consider so as the long time as the run time will be will be uh, shorter uh it will uh, be it will lead to a uh, a lesser like uh, cost of the product means these are the important and the very small factors that ha- that has to be uh, considered basically during this process then very important thing that we have to look is the product yield and quality okay now if the ferment is now we have just gone through the cost of the media culture growth and viability process run time but it is very important to uh, consider the product yield see if because uh, the quality and the product yield cannot be compromised uh, the cost media or the culture or the run time can, can be compromised but it's not that we can compromise on the basis of the run time or uh, cost about the product yield and quality like if we are using like uh, if we are using some very key for me uh, uh, media components or uh, uh, like uh, the process which has shorter run time we are not getting any like good yield or uh, product and the quality so this is very important factor which has to be uh, like uh, taken into consideration so it is very important to consider all the factors uh, and and we can understand the any process uh, it can't be like ideal that uh, uh but but it, at industrial level we look for all these factors that can be like uh, have we can have these uh, factors then we can have a good uh, product yield and quality then comes the concentration of nutrients and by products in the fermentation media are important influencing factors so the concentration of the nutrients and by products as uh, we all know that uh, while we start uh, we start any process uh, media formulation is very important so while designing the media while designing the media initially at the lab scale we have to optimize the media composition so here we can we can uh, we can optimize the media components on the basis of the concentration of the different nutrients uh then only we can proceed further at the pilot scale or the lab scale at the industrial level so here it is the, these this concentration of the nutrients and by products in the media they also play a play a very important and influencing role in the industrial fermentation now the component or the parts of a fermentation process first when we know that it is the fermentation of the media that is to be used in inoculum development and fermentation so in the, uh, at coming to the industrial level basically a lot of research has to be 
uh, done uh, during the lab scale and then only the process which is uh, viable which is like feasible to be used at the industrial level can be taken up at the industrial level then second thing com comes the industry uh, the sterilization of the medium and fun uh, fermenters so uh, sterilization also is a very important uh, process and sterilization of the medium is also very important because once sterilization is proper uh, then only a clean and clear process can be done then the production of an active pure culture in sufficient quantity to inoculate the production vessel now it is very important to inoculate or to have the inoculum with a pure culture so the culture should be pure it should be active and in sufficient quantity so basically inoculum is very important during this process so initially at the time when the inoculum at the time of the cultivation of the inoculum the culture should be tested in between just to understand whether the culture is pure or not then the growth of the organism in the production fermenter under optimum conditions for product formation so when we talk about any industrial or the microbiology or any like a fermentation process optimum conditions or optimization is very important when we come to any process a lot of studies or experiment has been done has been done on optimization so the optimum conditions should be standardized during a process in the fermenter at the uh, industrial level then the extract then the extraction and of the product and its purification so after the fermentation process so up till here up to these four points actually we were talking about the upstream we were talking about the upstream upstream means we are carrying out the fermentation process we are getting the cells or product or whatever is a requirement as per the uh, uh, as per the product formation so now comes the downstream actually this extraction and the and the purification of the product is actually comes under the it comes under the downstream processing so uh, in we will be talking in detail about this extraction and the purification process in the next in the uh, next lecture of uh, downstream processing then the last thing that is very important is the disposable of effluents produced by the process so the disposable is very important because as with the fermentation uh, the generation of lots of microorganisms about the media so there are so many things about the waste is there after taking a you after taking the uh, basically the interested uh, product or the cells of the product then the disposal of effluent has to be done so it is very important that how safely this disposable of effluent has been done and basically uh, the cell free media or the or basically uh, the uh, cells the debris of the cells they have to be disposed very carefully so uh, these are the components of the uh, basically the important component parts of a fermentation process now the major groups of commercially important fermentations so now during uh, when a fermentation process is taking place so the major groups that are to be taken into consideration during this fermentation process the first one those that produce microbial cells or biomass production of microbial cells or biomass as the product so if the need of the process is for the microbial cells of the biomass there may be the need of the microorganisms product of interest might be the microbial metabolites then recombinant products 
and those that can modify a compound which is added to the fermentation the transformation process so these are the things that may be uh, required as per the uh, as per the basically the requirement of the fermentation process uh, these are taken into consideration now up till now we were talking about uh, the about the fermentation and about the uh, components the media now coming to the main content of this uh, talk uh, we are we will talk about the fermentation types so there are actually three types of fermentation used in industries for bio process development so now when we talk about the bio process development so bio process development includes a lot of factors a lot of factors means first thing we were talking about the cost effectiveness of any process that is very important then the type of the fermentation system that is to be used about the design of a reactor about the process development about the improvement of the microorganism so basically these all comes under the bio process development and the fermentation systems it is decided basically on the basis of the product and microorganism used so the kind of system that is to be used in any uh, uh, industry it uh, basically will depend upon the product and microorganisms whether the whether it should be a batch fermentation a fed based fermentation or a continuous fermentation so the main types of fermentation systems are the batch fed batch or continuous so either of the systems basically are explored at the industrial level in the industry, uh, in the fermentation processes so first one we'll talk about the batch fermentation batch fermentation fed batch fermentation and continuous fermentations they are different from each other so now first when we talk about the batch fermentation so in batch the word batch itself means that a single batch and batch fermentation it is actually a closed culture system which contains an initial limited amount of nutrients so it depends uh, actually uh, different uh, volumes of reactors are av available or the, or the bio reactors are available for fermentation whether it is lab scale uh, lab scale around uh, from 2 liters to 10 liters it has been used at the lab scale but the batch fermentation the main point that is to be considered during the batch fermentation that it is a closed culture system it is very important for a batch fermentation closed culture system means like when we give any substrate then we cannot add any additional substrate into it neither we can uh, uh, neither any product or the media can be uh, taken from the uh, during the fermentation process during the fermentation so it is the batch it is a closed culture system nothing can be added and nothing can be removed during the process of the fermentation in batch fermentation so initial a limited amount of nutria whatever the concentration of the nutrient or the substrate is given that will run throughout the process nutrients are not added nutrients are not added during fermentation and no products are removed during the process that's what i said that no product can be removed and no nutrients can be added during the process third thing microorganisms are inoculated to a fixed volume in the medium in a fermenter and the microorganisms means we are talking about inoculum the inoculum which we are using like normally in case of uh, fungi we use a 10% and in case of uh, bacteria 5% so a fixed amount of volume of the uh, inoculum it is added in the medium of a fermenter then as the microbial growth progresses as the microbial growth progresses the nutrients are gradually consumed and by products are 
accumulated. So we all, uh, I would be talking about the growth curve uh, in this batch fermentation. So as the microbial growth, it will come into the exponential phase, into the exponential phases, the nutrients will be actually consumed at that point of time and the byproducts will be accumulated in the media. Then exponential growth phase, it lasts for few generations and then stationary phase reaches soon. So here, uh, this uh, growth phase, it is just ending with a uh, few generations and but then it is maintained by the stationary phase. As soon as the uh, carbon source will become uh, limited, the, the, it will, the growth will enter into the stationary phase and the exponential phase will last. Then other important parameters those have to be considered during the process are DO that is the dissolved oxygen, temperature, pH and foaming. These are very important processes that can be monitored by the controllers in the fermenter. Because if we, if we just make a difference between the bioreactors or the like uh, at the if, if, if some uh, at the lab, lab scale uh, students are using at the lab scale some shake class conditions so in the shake class conditions we can only we cannot basically monitor the oxygen we can in, in shakers orbital shakers we can just control the temperature as well as the rpm but we cannot monitor the dissolved oxygen or the ph that we have to uh, just uh, monitor frequently and manually but here in case these parameters they can be controlled by the controllers that are present or the fitted in the fermenter then the growth rate is not constant as due to continuous changes in culture environment so we all know that since it is uh, since only uh, it is a closed system and no nutrient and no product can be so basically the growth of the continuous changes in the culture environment it basically changes there is there is continuous changes because the components are being changing with the growth of the microorganisms so this is basically the microbial growth uh, curve in batch fermentation if we, uh, we all know uh, like in previous uh, lectures i have been uh, telling about this graph this is basically the growth curve and the phases of the growth curve and they are basically uh, four important phases uh, that are uh, uh, can be seen in this growth curve is the lag phase log phase stationary phase and a uh, death phase so clearly we can see in the lag phase that there is no increase in the cell number because at that point of time the microorganism it doesn't grow because their machinery actually it is a uh, uh, it is an adapt adapting condition basically. The machinery of the cell they synthesize the new components like uh, some cofactors, ribosomes. But as the lac phase is uh, lac phase comes to an end, starts are uh, starts are this log or the exponential phase. So here we can say that there is an increase in the number of cells and. Here we can see that the growth rate is, rate is constant. Microorganisms, they are dividing and doubling at regular intervals with a balanced growth. Then uh, the third phase is the stationary phase where we can uh, uh, see that the number of viable cells, they actually remain uh, constant and uh, they result as a balance uh, between the cell division and the cell death. Means as many numbers of the cell are divided, the cells are also uh, entering into the death phase so this is basically uh, the stationary phase then comes the death phase and so basically the total it, it this death phase results basically in so, to, the complete nutrient deprivation and the, another factor may be the build up of some like uh, some by some toxic products so the base products might be build up in that media so uh, the microorganisms they may uh, result in a uh, death phase so this is all about basically the microbial growth uh, curve and during the batch fermentation process. Now when we we'll talk about the fat batch fermentation. So uh, the difference between the fat batch fermentation and the batch fermentation. Now as we know about the batch fermentation, the only difference between the batch and the fat batch fermentation that it is a process 
that place like it is a uh, between uh, means it is a process which play a role between the batch and continuous process so we know batch process in the next uh, few minutes uh, in, the, in the next few slides i will be talking about the continuous process so a, a batch process or the fermentation it can be uh, said as the semi batch fermentation now why i am using this word semi batch fermentation semi batch fermentation means it is not totally batch fermentation and the difference that makes it as the semi batch process is like the addition of the nutrients takes place takes place at uh, at regular intervals of time or it may be added continuously by a feed port during a batch fermentation so it becomes fat batch but in batch fermentation no entry of the nutrients and no exit of the product but here in this case only entry or the nutrient can be added but no product or no liquid or, or no uh, removal of the product or the media can be take place so this is the basically a difference between the that this is how it makes it as the semi batch process so here where the nutrients required for cell growth and production product formation they are fed at regular intervals or continuously by a feed port during this batch fermentation and the thing that i was telling that the fermented broth that is harvested at the end of the fermentation run but not in between this broth it may be repeated by a number of times if the cells are fully viable and productive the culture volume increases during the run so now see uh, if suppose uh, during a fed batch fermentation initially in a 5 liter reactor suppose we started with a working volume of 2.5 liters so and uh, every uh, reactor has a capacity of its working volume so if we talk about the 5 liter bio reactor the working volume may be around 3 3.5 liters so initially we have to plan that if we are using a fed batch condition so how much working volume we have to start with because initially when we will be feeding with the nutrients or the substrate the culture volume will be increasing so that this is the very important factor that has to be taken into consideration before starting any run then comes the media components media components like carbon nitrogen phosphate inducers or precursors they can be created either continuously or regular intervals like means any the component the any component which is a part of the uh, basically media that can be added during the run of this fed batch process now why what is happening actually by changing the feed rates now what is happening why we are using this the advantage why use, we are using this fed batch is that by changing the feed rates the concentration of limiting nutrients in the culture can be varied either to remain at a constant level or to fail follow a predetermined optimum profile until the culture volume reaches the maximum and then a batch mode is used so basically this feed rates when we change the feed rates the concentration of the limiting nutrients they are basically replenished in, into this fermentation process now this fed batch fermentation they it increases the concentration of the desired product or the yield because we are continuously uh, supplying the nutrients that may increase the growth rate of the culture and then they may increase the concentration of the desired product or the yield then comes the continuous in continuous fermentation so in continuous fermentation we have talked about the batch culture about the fat batch culture but continuous fermentation is totally different from the batch and the fat batch condition because here we can feed the substrate or the nutrients and continuously we can remove the product or the media so in continuous fermentation the sterile media is fed into the culture vessel at the same rate as the media containing microorganisms are removed so inlet and outlet both are open 
like inlet for the uh, nutrients or the substrates and outlet for the microorganisms for the media for the product the exponential growth rate of the microorganisms it is maintained for prolonged period in the fermenter by adding fresh medium at regular intervals so exponential growth rate will obviously be maintained because we are uh, providing the nutrients regularly continuously and at the same rate the media is also removing so it is in the steady state basically then microbes reach the exponential growth rate and continue in same state due to availability of the nutrient so exponential uh, growth rate is there in the uh, uh, exponential growth rate is there because uh, because sufficient amount of uh, nutrients are always available for the uh, for the microorganisms to maintain the growth rate then the rate of nutrient exchange is expressed as the dilution rate so what is dilution rate the dilution rate is actually uh, defined as the d is defined as the f by b so dilution rate f is the flow rate and b is the volume so dilution rate may be defined as the flow rate that is flow rate of the media in ml per hour from the inlet and b the vessel volume the volume of the vessel so it will decide actually the dilution rate of the media so this is basically a diagram of the uh, continuous culture system where uh, uh, this is a fresh medium control valve and uh, this is the inlet the medium that is being uh, introduced and this is being entered into this culture uh, this is the actually culture vessel and this is air filter and from this is the outlet from where the overflow or the product of the microorganisms they will these these are removed now this is actually the design of a bioreactor and uh, these are the parts and the functions of the uh, fermenter so here we can say uh, we can see in this uh, bioreactor there is the acid base port anti foam port we have the basically inoculation pipe from where we can uh, uh, put our inoculum we have the oxygen sensors baffles and the we have sampling port compressed air unit sterile air inlet and we have the probe ph probe temperature probe and we have the impeller so basically first of all we start with our impeller or impeller is also known as the agitator so its function it is basically to stir the media continuously and these uh, this impeller they prevent the cells from settling down basically if we keep something like uh, without uh, any uh, uh, like uh, impelling or the rotating agitating then it will settle down so the rule of the impeller that they prevent the settling down of the cells and uh, the important thing that they and they prevent settling down and distribute the oxygen throughout the medium then come the sparger sparger actually they introduce the sterile oxygen to the media in case of aerobic fermentation pro process so sterile oxygen here we can say this is a sterile air line so this is the compressed air from here uh, means there is a sparger uh, which which will uh, actually uh, introduce the oxygen then we have the baffles or the vortex breaker disrupt they disrupt the vortex and provide better mixing means they will uh, just uh, break the bubbles then inlet air filter filter air before enter into the fermenter we have a rotameter uh, just to uh, control the flow rate of the air pressure gauge to control the pressure we have the temperature probe to sense or monitor the change in the temperature uh, of the medium during the process we have a cooling jacket to maintain the temperature throughout the process the ph probe it will measure and monitor the ph we have the dissolved oxygen probe it measure the dissolved oxygen in the fermenter and uh, foam probe it will detect the presence of foam 
acid base anti foam so they will uh, they will maintain the uh, required ph in the mid day neutralizing by acidic condition and neutralizing the acid condition they will neutralize the basic condition and anti foam will be used to break down and prevent foams then we have a sampling point certain walls will control the fluid flow of the liquid and gases and we have a control panel which monitor overall parameters in the bioreactor so basically this is a design of a bioreactor and these all are the components that has been uh, the part of this bioreactor now this is basically uh, i can show the real bioreactor like this is a bioreactor and here is as i was talking about the front so see this is the uh, maybe a ph probe a do probe and uh, this is a condenser this is a motor and these three units these three inlets which we can see may be used for acid base or anti foam and uh, these may be used as a foam sensor and temperature sensor this is the inoculum introducing port and uh, basically uh, th this is this is uh, this reactor can be used for a uh, batch uh, fermentation because uh, if we talk about the continuous uh, fermentation there might be some additional port from where the media uh, from where the feed can be introduced and one sampling port where the sampling can be done so uh, basically uh, it, it this can be used because here i can see only one sampling or the uh, uh, inoculum pouring port but here after putting the inoculum we can also take the sampling sam sample also uh, so this is basically the design of a bioreactor that may be used for a patch fermentation so this is basically the references that from uh, from which the there are certain uh, contents that has been taken from these references uh, so i think uh, that is all for today's lecture on the uh, fermentation systems thank you